Hi, Brian here. Hi, Steel Grim. And we're finally here for the video we planned on shooting, which is going to be a reply to Skelligrim Nelson. Uh, he did a video that was called the, uh, Some Concerns About the Perils of Knife Defense. I believe is what he called it. Some, some Concerns About the Perils of Knife Defense. And then I hope I got that right. And then we also had, it's also replied to Nick Drossels, which uh, he did one called Two Nice Disarms That Don't Work. And he had an, an experienced guy, and the guy came in to stab, and you know, and he, you know, he came in stabbing at him, and basically just marked him up with a marker. Yeah. You know, you know, like that would do something, you know, and you know, it looked like he was just mostly keeping his arm out. Right. So, I mean, not trying to put Dick Drossels down. I see some good videos he's done too. We're not saying that. We're yeah. just saying is the marker thing really? And we've already pretty much covered that. No, it's going to take a real cut, you know, if you yeah, you're really have to get a real to thrust, it. you know, to get that blade in there. We've got a retractable blade because we believe if you're wearing clothing. And you get a knife attack. I mean, there's chances you might not be, but if you're wearing clothing, the main thing you're going to worry about the most is these thrusts, because cuts have to be really committed and take a lot of force, and they're basically the same as thrusting. You have to come in. You can't just come in and, you know, that's not going to do much. Even though it looks good, I can do it real fast, you might cut through the shirt some and cut a quarter inch into the guy or an yeah. eighth of an inch, and it's not going to be a, a kill. So what we're going to do today is we're going to actually see if we can defend against the knife technique where somebody's coming in like in these prison type scenes. Yeah. And we lost our blade. Oh crap. Are you okay? Oh, I'm good. We lost our blade. This is crap. Oh. Well. That's all right. It can be repaired before we move along. Uh, we're also going to show you some things that you need to be concerned about uh, when you're defending against a knife. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, more importantly, the uh, major arteries of the body and the ones that are most accessible for like your three to five inch knives. Um, beginning with the arteries of the head and neck, you've got the carotid, or the common carotid. Right. Now Check it branches off into others, but those are not nearly as important. You cut one carotid, you're going to cut them all. Uh, those go down into the, uh, the brachiocephalic artery, which is uh, connected directly to the aorta of the heart. And those branch out into the subclavians, and they become the axillary here, which becomes the brachial artery there. And then down into the uh, forearms, as the brachial artery comes into the elbow, you will have the radial exit down to here, and it'll go into the hand. We had somebody have, saying you can't bleed to left below the hand. I disagree on that. No, you've got radi you've yeah, got you uh, arterial arches in here where the ulnar and the uh, radial artery uh, come together in your hand. So that's uh, very possible. Uh, and, and speaking of which, the, this is the radial artery, this is the ulnar ar artery. And um, then of course you've got your, uh, down here you've got your, your femoral, your deep femoral, femoral, deep femoral. And um, we'll talk about those and, and uh, how to defend them and also uh, how much of the knife actually has to penetrate in order to uh, reach those arteries. So if you're defending, you don't want this. You don't want to walk out there. I know this is a good defense if you're trying to talk to somebody and go, Hey guys, you know, I'm sorry, I, don't, I didn't mean to offend you. You, you don't want that. But the that's a Duke's knife, up deal there. You want your hands where, yeah, you want arms where if something happens and you you parry against that you arm, you don't sure want him to slash back and cut in here. The idea this is to keep very your bad. arteries yes. proximal to your uh, axial skeleton as much as possible. Uh, uh, naturally, your brachial you uh, almost here. always sits uh, uh, proximal to your uh, axial skeleton. Uh, okay. Now, your, uh, you can turn these distal if you don't want to do that. You don't want these va these arteries turned distal to your point. You always want them proximal to your body. Uh, and we'll talk about that with Protect relation the to the... You uh, keep the head down at different times. Let's say for the chin ending, tucked. You could tuck your chin. It'd be better to get stabbed. I know it sounds horrible, but it'd be better to stab in the chin than in the mm -hmm. throat or cut in the throat. It'd better get cut on the actual... So yeah, you see it's people much with scars harder to reach here. the arteries of the face Guys and get in fights like that. You'll see scars on their face like that because they did do that when they tried to protect it. Uh, stabbing to the head, it's really not a good thing because to stab into somebody's skull is very, very difficult and it's probably not going to kill the guy instantly. Right. I mean, it's, it's, they're not going to do that. They're going to go for softer areas where they can sit here and thrust. Right. Another thing I want to cover is that we got a handle here, but uh, the grip. He's going to grip it tight. They're not going to do a uh, culinary cutting type style to cut at you if they're stabbing. They're just going to have a grip where you can't just push it against the thumb easily and get it out. Uh, another thing, they talked about grabbing the blade. Oh, yeah. We, we discussed that with Scalagrim in the episode, if you all want to watch it. 
we did uh, one. If that happened and I went through here, I'm going to pull back instantly. Right. So if you think that's going to stop it, it's not. If he tries Let's to go grab, to what does he have to get a hold of? Nothing. And now you're nothing. And you're going to have hold moist hand. with uh, blood, blood now, and now you can't get a good grip. And you could be bleeding and profusely. You could also so hit an artery. Good. Like I said, you've got uh, your radial and your ulnar that that uh, finish out in the hand. So and we don't recommend anything an like that. You don't arch. want to impale anything. So and yeah. if you did by accident. You would not want to try to grip and control it this way. Mm -hmm. You'd probably just want to be a man and push it push. out of his hand because you'd have to do it quick because he's going to pull back. Yeah. You'd have to follow his hand in and push against that blade to get it out. And, Always you know, remember the weakest your part hands of anybody's screw. grip. I would not is recommend anything like that. Weakest part of a knife. Grip you're not going to just get here. it in your hand and he can't pull it out. It's going to slip so. off and you're going to have it like this. It's, there's nothing we can all do. Well, Thranda. What do you say, man? You think we ought to get started on some knife defense that works? Yeah, we'll start off doing some uh, actual, which gets us another knife here, uh, get get some of those situations where somebody comes in and they're determined to like to stab you and work, work on you with all these thrusts and stuff. Because that's what everybody seems to be concerned about. They've seen the videos online. They're concerned with that. And they uh, see people stabbed to death in videos this way and prison shankings and stuff. And it doesn't yeah, necessarily mean the guy's highly skilled because he's leading with his hand and hitting and thrusting and grabbing you. It just means he knows to keep this back so you can't grab it and to retract as quick as possible, which is basic techniques. It's basic. Keep a good stance, not lose his balance. Yeah. And, and the, the thing is, if you keep moving, the first thing we'll show is if you keep moving, for him to get you, he's practically going to have to reach out to get you. That's when you see these knife defenses. That's what they're simulating. That's when you see them They're work. simulating the guy trying to get you. Right. They're simulating that. You know, him going, oh, man, I can't get him. I'm trying yeah. to. I'm, I'm having getting trouble. wore out. I'm, I'm getting the, hit. I'm getting, he's yeah. moving. You so. know, that's when that kind of thing takes place. But uh, we can also maybe go over some stuff where, like, if you are stuck in a small area and you have to try to defend against this guy cutting Maybe it back into a corner or something like right, that. Right, because you still have to do something. You can't stand there. That's the point we want to make in, in this video is that if you don't have the mentality that you're going to fight for your life and you don't care about his... You don't give a crap about him anymore because he's already given up his rights by trying to kill you. Right. If you don't have that mentality and you get scared and you got the flight syndrome and you're just trying to like cover up and move and let him stab you, you're going to die. That's right. You, you can't be afraid of getting cut. You that's what we're going to show you today. More you afraid some, of, of, of not some, gaining uh, control of the situation than getting cut. We're going to give you some techniques that are going to make you feel a little more confident about uh, facing somebody with a knife. And hopefully, uh, and God forbid this ever happens to anyone. But if you ever end up in that situation, hopefully some of the things we work with today uh, will, will help give you some confidence. And, uh, and by all means, if you carry money on you, you can carry money in another hidden location. Carry your dummy wallet. Carry your wallet with a little money in it. Give it to him. Go cancel all your credit cards and that makes him happy. Oh man, you mean we can't do like the Glimmer Man and yeah. like Steven Seagal and, and ask if they want paper or plastic and have the razor blade and the credit card? Oh, that was pretty cool. Uh, but no, just say, hey, hey, if you're sitting there doing that, hey man, no, don't hurt me. Pull a wallet out and try to give it to drop it and go, oh shit. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, man. And then walk off and get the hell out of there. Start backing up, run like hell if he starts yep. trying to pick it up. Because chances are he just wanted to punk you out That's and steal right. your stuff. That's right. He was not there because he wanted to kill you. He right. wanted Their to control not... you and somebody. But if somebody's got a knife on you, they're trying to make you get in a vehicle, you know, or, or you know that they wish you harm, they're going to try to kill you and they're coming at you, that's not going to work. They're not right. going to take any kind of... Uh, they're not going to take no for an answer. They're not going to yeah. take any bribe or payoff. Yeah, you, you might want to do the, uh, uh, don't hurt me while you're beating the crap out of them because I'll confuse the hell out of them. You know, if you're really hurting them, then, you know, you're messing them up, like screaming, don't hurt me while you're doing it, Farkas. that might be a good psychology, but I mean, it's not going to stop them from doing anything, you know? Right. Yeah. No, anyway, no. let's get started, and we'll see what we can do here. We have somebody to film for us, and we'll go through some different uh, actual simulations to start off before we talk about any kind of technique to see if we can even defend against it. Yeah. All right. Ah! <sighs> 
it much. It's hard to tell about that. Yeah. Ay! Oh, that was a good one. Oh, sorry. You got my hand. Are you all right? Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to do one where we don't have much mobility and see if it's possible to fit. You, uh, yeah, you caught me. Where your wrist, yeah. Yeah. I probably would have got cut on that. I'll try to stand still and see if it's possible to fit. It's hard for me not to move because I'm used to moving. I uh, notice how he's grabbing my arm. That's what he's supposed to do to keep me from defending. That was very good. It got me really good right here. So not moving is a lot more difficult. Yeah. Let's try again. idea if you have to stand still it's not easy to defend. Hell no. It's much easier to be moving around because if you're moving around and he's coming at you and you move he has to reach over extend his reach. That's why something like that would become possible. But if he's not overextending his reach you're not going to get a move like that. If he's staying in tight and not losing his balance coming and grabbing and punching you're not going to get that technique. Yeah. That was cool. Did it very well. He got me the good one in the face with a punch. That was pretty nice. How are you, Brian? We're uh, back from our little scenario here. We're going to talk about what we could have learned from it. Uh, basically, uh, a major technique is to keep boy, your hand forward. And one thing is if he's trying to defend, I want to get a hold of him here and pull him over so I can, yeah. so I can stab that side of the body. I want to get a hold of this arm because for him to stop this arm here, and it's common, you know, uh, the guy asked me to look into a book, uh, uh, what was it, uh, uh, Knife Fighting Techniques from Folsom Prison. Folsom Prison, yeah. yeah. And they just show you basically what you see in shanking scenes online if you want to look them up. I don't, I don't care to look them up normally, but, you know, if you look them up, look them up online. And this arm is your main defense if you're standing here and somebody thrusts. That's what you're going to stop in this way, right? So the idea is this hand hits him. Oh, him off yeah. Guard. And gets him so I can start stabbing him really good. Now we can't move around there because, of course, he's not somebody that's going to stand still just like me. If I have room, I'm going to move. Unless I was oh, yeah. in a tight little spot and I had to stand here and parry everything, you know, and block it and hit. And right. your best bet there, block and punch, punch at the same time. I didn't do that a lot with him to actually block and punch him, but you can do that. I did some. Uh, you did some uh, short. Uh, I did some blows to the arms. Yeah, you did. And yeah. a good one, just to show it, I don't want to hurt him here, but if I did get control of the arm for a second and it came by, did you see this vein in here? This yeah, now there's a there's, there's a nerve, nerve that runs here. right here. But if I were to pop that, he's not exaggerating, that's bad. Yeah, it, it's, it, it'll send... Sh you can even do it if you're fighting inside here, if somebody's punching. <laughs> you can hit it. If you hit solid, oh. you will... But it's hard to do that on a punch. I'm not mm. telling y'all guys to expect that's yeah. going to happen. I would tell you right but now... But if you time it right in the fight and hit it, he's going to definitely he's gonna know feel you hit the, that. He's going to feel that all the way up in the fingertips, This is man. the same uh, nerves I was talking about with Scaligrim in our discussion, where I said that in, in SCA, if you get hit inside here, or you get hit with a hard enough blow from, let's say, a stick weapon, 
it will hit those nerves and you will just drop mm -hmm. whatever's in your that's hand. It. When it gets hit, it's going to compress the biceps, hit the same nerve area, the same. Uh, now, and, and that's it. And well, something similar happened earlier because he hit my my wrist here. Right, I hit the nerve center in here, which is right where this. Uh, yeah, here where the radial starts. Right, to meet I hit the it wrist. here, which made him drop the knife. Yeah. So and when he, I came in. Yeah, when I hit it there, which I hit it hard because we're. We're yeah. trying to simulate the real thing. I'm hitting hard. I'm not playing with it. Oh, no, no, yeah. Going, I'm, oh, Belgram here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm bruised up. You know, I'm moving your hand around. I'm, yeah. You know, we weren't doing it. I was trying to hit it because I'm pretending that he's trying to stab me. Right. In my mind, this is a knife. I'm trying to do something not to get me. And there's another the one. The most cuts he might have got, he got a couple of nicks on my elbow, I think. Yeah. Uh, he got one cut here, which is a pretty good little thrust. Well, I don't know how deep it was because I don't think it was a, I didn't feel anything like uh, that. The risk for that, it was a what tip, is it? But that might have been kind of bad. I mean, Possibly. I would have had to go to the hospital on this. So. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. I, know, like, yeah, I might have been waiting out the fight last year. That might have been the end of it for me because there is some stuff under here that's bad. I right, you also to consider, things. too, that you've got uh, pectoral muscles, all kinds of stuff that blade still has to go through before it even hits anything uh, vital. One thing I didn't get to cover is one of the reasons I was saying hold it this way if you're thrusting, unless you're doing specific cuts and you want to change grip. Hold it this way if you don't have a good, uh, you know, something to keep your hand from slipping and you're thrusting. Sometimes it's good to hold with your palm to push it through. Now all these different grips are for a reason. This one is your best one when somebody's trying to disarm you because you have it closed tight. Mm -hmm. If I have it like this and the guy pushes against this blade and gets a hold of my arm, he can push it right out. Well, He's going to get minimally cut if he holds his hand this way and this is some of the thickest skin in the entire body. It might great. hurt and bother him for days afterwards, but even if he gets a little nick against the side of the blade. Better off that way. Yeah, he's not going to, it's not going to hurt him much if he pushes away. Now it'll so, even work this way. It'll work that way to push that out. Like well, something else. It. And let's say I got a hold of his arm and I want to push this blade out. I can do that. What about Weakest grip. Blade. Yeah. Right there. This one, if you're lucky, you can even grab the back and do it. You know, if you have control. Now. This is something I have control of. If I get the arm and have control, that's when I would do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, heck, I've even seen, I mean, I've done this before. And when somebody comes in, which is silly, most people won't do that. But you can just do this. And I see I'm probably getting a cut. But if I wrench it, even if he stands in front of me, if I wrench around, it'll push it right. against the back of your arm and it'll fall. You're not going to. And here's the trick: it. even with all these uh, arteries here, the ulnar and the radial, you've got the uh, brachioradialis and the uh, flexor carpi radialis. But these arteries run up underneath these major muscles of the arm. So when he did that, even if you got a little cut, the chance of it actually hitting something vital hey, underneath all this. If you had to, even it's a situation and you had to hold the blade, even if you could push it against your own body to get it out of his mm -hmm. hand, it's all right. Because, I mean, yeah. chances are if it's the side of the blade, once you get control, you can use anything. But, I mean, heck, I wouldn't recommend this, but you could even use the side of your arm to do it, but you right. might get cuts, the problem. Something else we learned yeah. was uh, the use of those uh, little short... Oh, those, those kicks, kicks were nasty. When I kicked him in the leg, did you feel it? Oh, God, yes. I mean, yeah, yeah. That, that stung good. Right. I mean, it's a great one. Uh, those little short, those little oh, short. Oh, as for things you can carry, we were going to do some more of this. This video is getting really long. We'll probably come back later and do a follow up. Mm -hmm. Of uh, you can carry sticks legally. I've talked to police officers and said if my wife's walking at night, they'd rather her not carry a knife to defend herself because only criminals usually carry knives and it's harder for defense. So they'd rather carry a nice stick, a three foot stick, like a hombo, like an old, you know, like the like Japanese an ash, uh, yeah, like, wood dowel, yeah, yeah, fighting weapon, just something like that. They'd rather her carry that to right. defend herself with. Plus, the criminal sees it and may not want to pull a knife against the stick. That's kind of the, that's right. You've you got, got the, the reach. reach. And if I had a three foot stick today, this would be a different fight. Heck, if I had a three foot chain today, a heavy chain, no weights on it or anything, just a heavy chain hidden on me like the old bikers did, this fight wouldn't last as long. He'd want to no. retreat. Because that chain, just the chain, which I guess we could dim it later, I thought about doing it in this one, but you could shatter a skull with the chain. Mm. Just because of the weight of the chain, if you have yep. one like they used to carry them and they'd wrap them around yep. their waist. And, hide them on them and somebody pulls a knife they go ha ha I got a chain and then we can always do a ball yeah. up video on it's like uh, a Manrique or a Kusori Fondo you know I saw the belt thing is a good idea it could be used right but it's very difficult other than their resting portion unless you have a heavy enough belt buckle and the problem with that those are some specialty item you're not going to have a regular belt buckle do enough damage to the guy who maybe right. cut him and put a bruise on him to keep him from getting hit with it and running in and just knifing the heck out of you right. and, and the we reason we didn't do... see that today let's bring that up why didn't we see this scene? Because that's not what we did. We didn't We didn't just react that way or put our hands up or just start flailing down like you see in the video. Right, yeah. And I'm going, and I just readjust my cuffs and stuff to get around that. 
Yeah. But that, we didn't let the guy do that to us. We kept moving, and he's afraid of getting hit. Mm -hmm. He's afraid of getting kicked, even though, I mean, his knife's more damaging if he gets a good thrust. Yeah. He still has to land a punch with the knife to, to get a good or thrust. Or I still have to manage to grab a hold of him, anything. Right, but he did good. One scene there where he got a pretty good thrust on me, you know, it wasn't real deep, or it had felt like a tip when I was moving away. He got a hold of my arm that I was defending with. Yeah. So the thing with that is that's what he's going to try to do. If he's got brains, he's going to be trying to get a hold of you and pull you this yeah. way. Or get a hold of your clothing. Right, and if you're not defending well, he may just grab you and try to yeah hold you. Yeah. But, I mean, of course, there's a lot of stuff he could do here, too. If he, if he was to, to push my arm this way but, yeah. and he gets it going that way, I'm trying to thrust. But yeah. if I try to hang on, I'm going to have to let go and do something right, else. Right, right, right. And the other idea of them switching knives, that can be done. He grabs my hand. And I try to switch knives real quick. Yeah, we could have done that, but we were, well, we were fine. Again, we got really plenty of opportunities up. There was no to follow necessity up on to this. It. Yeah. Lots There's, of opportunities. Yeah, we'll come back up. and do more. Well, we, can, we can teach you about coats and, and stuff like that as part and of the And our defense. good friend that's ex military and stuff that loves knife fighting, he's done this stuff for me. We've done this just for fun during barbecues and stuff with rubber knives and stuff. We'll roll around on the ground and, until we're sick, okay? And he couldn't make it. So yeah. we well, actually had my wife time. filming. She did a great job. But we wanted to get this out for you, and I yep. apologize for the extremely long video, but I thought y'all would find it interesting. Yeah, I think so. I, I, but you I can defend time. against it. It's just having the proper mentality. And the Most people are going to be so oh, sorry. Most oh, people sorry. are going to be so afraid they're not going to react. Right. They're going to have the adrenaline. You're going to be shaking, you know, and you're not going to think about your move. So what you need to do if you want to be able to defend against this is train this. Get your rubber knife. And train with your friends, and mm -hmm. use realistic attacks. Don't yeah, go out yeah, there yeah. And expect that to be a you know yeah. a kill. And, you know I'm going to lunge at you over and over again like I'm fencing because they're not going to come at Stabbing you. Stabbing is the most effective thing. If I do that, it's going to get taken away. This, with a blade of that kind of length, uh, your standard uh, folding knife, you're going to want to stab to get to anything vital. Right. And I mean that's that includes the brachial, the femoral. Uh, but your three-inch blade, yeah, a little blade. You have to stab. Now, he's not wearing anything here. So, yes, if he grabs me and I have the knife, like he grabs me or something, I just, yeah, that's going to cut bad. I'm just cutting all the way now, through. You know, this, I'm not wearing cuts a, would be nasty yes. if I push with everything I got. Just, mm. But I'm yeah. pushing him. It's the same as yeah. me thrusting. I might as well just thrust in here, yeah. which would probably do way more damage. It would. Me, but this length of blade, look how deep that would go. Yes, this and be this will bad. get you right into the uh, cardiopulmonary right cannula. So he here. wouldn't really want to grab me if I had a knife like this. I'm just using it as an example. This will cut him with nothing on him. Mm -hmm. Now, if he had some kind of long sleeve jacket or something, I might have trouble cutting him. That's right. Stabs are... Yeah, are, thrust is going to be way better. Mm -hmm. If I thrusted him in here... Oh, that's it. It's over. And I mean, then it's cut. Thrust and then cut. Or... It'd be way better. Down through here. Oh, yeah. Well, this, this, to get this, you're going to want to stab in here and cut. And we're not trying to teach you to kill people. Well, that's why you want to cut this. Is you want to cut in and cut. Right. Now Even in here, you want to thrust in and cut. You don't want to just carotid. risk doing that because no, yeah. if you just slice and not deep enough. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. You know, the one thing you always remember guy, defending against saying. a knife is to stay moving and <clears throat> trick him into getting frustrated and making that committed lunge. The minute and take that your happens, opportunity. Yes. The minute he that may happens, not give it. No, he may, he not, may give not give it. it. You may be there for her, but you know what? In an average knife fight. They've done statistics. If he has that much trouble getting to you and gets popped in the face a few times and he only cuts you a little bit and doesn't the get what he ain't wants, worth sticking around he for doesn't it. get the thrust and he knows he's winning, mm -hmm. he's going to go, oh, shit, this guy knows what he's doing. Guess what? He's going to start getting scared. If you get that knife from him, what are you going to do to him? What's right. going to happen to him? Are you going to give him quarters? Is he going to get mercy? So chances are he That would be, be your choice, but I'm sorry. I know what happens with me. I'm going to go nuts after I get that knife unless he yeah. gets away from me and runs off, and then I'll let him go. I mean, I'll tell you to chase somebody down, but I'm saying if he stands or keeps fighting, I consider him an opponent who could take the knife back, kill me at any time. He's going to get thrust in the most severe places I know until he falls. Stay moving, exactly. stay moving, stay yeah, moving. Stay moving. If you can move, use your surrounding, watch your terrain. Don't let yourself get back down. in the corners. You can and help don't it. get cut here. If you have to get you cut, get we cut on the packs. Even when I had the knife, backs I made sure I stuff is better than this. insides. No insides anywhere inside yeah. the leg or... Of course, no neck. Keep the head down if you have to. If he's trying to slice, and that's only defense because you got your arms tied up. Put your head down. Yep. Turn your head down. Hopefully, he won't get anything. So. Right. You know, Strand and I both had our our forearms right. facing each other. We were standing where our where our arteries are hard to get to. And our legs. Th believe it or not, you can be in martial arts and practice all these proper blocks and stuff. But this is the same as this, or when mm -hmm. you see people defending and they do this because they put their hands up and they defend the, yeah. the big roundhouse punches and blows like that, yeah. the sucker punches that way. You know, this is all the same block. Yeah, you just 
the Pop. down block where I'm blocking this way, Pop. that's the same block if I had my hand out and just drop it. I know you can't really see it here, but it's but the yeah. same motion. You just put power behind it, make sure it has force so you can have a chance of jarring the weapon loose or injuring his arm. Hit the pressure points on Tony. Like, hit in here if you can hit it. If it hurts bad enough, he might there, think twice about yeah. taking another stab at you. Yeah, if you hit in here, hit it. You can even take the knife out, hit in the back of the hand hard enough when he's going by. I was trying yeah. that a few times, but I wasn't able to hit it. It will cause him to drop it, possibly. Right. Yeah, man, we got a lot of great. If he drops the knife, here. don't lose that opportunity. Don't rush for the knife yourself. Take him. Don't Take worry about him. that knife. Right. Take him away from that knife because you're probably going to be better off Take fighting with the situation. It. Yeah. Man, we got a great opportunity for some follow-ups here. Oh, man. most definitely, and I will do one where you, what you can carry. We know you can carry pepper spray. We mm -hmm. know in a lot of places it's legal. Stun guns, uh, all those type of things. But we're trying to bring yeah. stuff that's simple. It's just a stick. It could give you a three-foot yeah. stick, nice hardwood. Don't carry a uh, balsa wood dowel. Yeah, you know get I mean? you something like a white oh, pine. Ash. Carry something good. Yes. Yeah. That doesn't uh, look real intimidating, but you could be using it to walk with a good cane. You know. Well, hey guys, uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's YouTube channel Deccan Thrand. And don't forget to uh, uh, <laughs> don't forget to uh, donate at, at our Patreon account. That's uh, Patreon user uh, Thrand. Am I right? Uh, yeah, Thrand. All right. Yeah. And uh, hey. We, we encourage you to, to uh, put in the comments thread uh, any any uh, suggestions for what you'd like to see in the future uh, on knife defenses. Uh, anything at all, man. Uh, I, just whatever you want to yeah, see. Yeah, anything we'll, you want to see. we got a lot of opportunities for some follow-ups. So, guys, we're, we'd be eager to, to yeah, show you some more. Yeah, we'd love to. I mean, there is stuff where it's applicable to use it this way, even though they say it's not, and so on. But that's when you start getting into more advanced knife fighting skills, and you're actually trying to fight like you would in, in HEMA, ARMA, or... You know, you get into stuff where you're fighting somebody who's fighting like we were today, and they're not going to let you just run in and grab them and stab yeah. them because they're like, well, what are you going to do? I mean, how right. are you going to get to me? I mean, you might get me some, but I can still get you. You know, that's yeah. the whole idea. Hey, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Catch you next time. Hi. Pavel. I think we did good. <laughs>